So we're up early, man. Practice starts. We are allowed to be on the water 30 minutes before sunrise, and we can fish all the way until 30 minutes after sunset. And I plan on using every single second of that time to try to locate these bass. We launched down here on Kissimmee today. A lot of water out here, so there's five different lakes we can fish. So there's a lot to be covered, a lot to be seen. But we're gonna start off here at Kissimmee, try to get super skinny and shallow with the anticipation of these bass moving up to spawn, and then we'll just go from there. There's nothing that I will not try to catch one. The first sign of life. Yeah, we uh we try not to leave any stones unturned, man, out there on the water. You know, I'm I'm on Google Earth constantly, and so I'm I'm looking to put this ranger wherever I can get it. And sometimes that means going through little ditches and creeks and backwaters, etc. We're trying to find this magical spot. That's a solid fish, and that's about a two-pound bass. I'm gonna mark a waypoint right here on my graph. Couple nibbles so far. We still looking for them, though. My bass boat is probably the most important tool I have. And having a reliable bass boat that's gonna get you to and from quickly, safely, and offer you an excellent casting platform is very, very paramount. I'm trying to see if this is accessible or not. Where the blue dot, and I'm trying to get into there. There are no limits to trying to find these bass, and we try to turn over every stone out there. And my Ranger is a mean machine when it comes to that. And that Mercury 250 on the back pushes that thing lightning speed, and that's what you need. Oh, that was a bite. When you don't catch it, though, you don't know if it was a gar or not. Oh, gosh. That's not a gar. Oh, gosh. That's what we came for, folks. 405. The goal during practice is to locate the fish and understand how they're utilizing the habitat. We want to learn that. We don't necessarily want to catch them all. And so while we're out in practice, there's a few different techniques that we'll utilize to prevent ourselves from doing just that. What you want to do is tie yourself on a, a hitchhiker like that. Then I'll take my bait and I'll simply screw that bad boy down into the head of that bait. And now we got no hook and we don't have to worry about catching any more bass. I feel like this is how you win tournaments, is just idling behind the wheel of your boat, trusting your electronics, trying to find something off the wall, off the contour lines. I'm here to find something super special. I want to try to win this event and just looking for that one magic rock or rock pile or something. The first thing I try to determine when I come to a body of water is what depth do I need to fish? That first bite's really critical to telling us that. For me, it's all about finding an area. I don't try to get bites in practice. I just want to find an area or two or three or four or a pattern that I'm comfortable with running. We're still hunting. It's just, man, this is bass fishing. Everybody thinks that we whack them. <laughs> I spend lots of hours looking at these two things. I'm not discouraged. I mean, this is part of it. I can't tell you how many tournaments I've won and not had a bite the first day of practice. I'm gonna keep looking. When I'm practicing, you know, whether it be largemouth or smallmouth, I always try to find a bait that I can cover a lot of water with and keep trying different depths. That for me is has been the formula that has worked, you know, over the last 20 years and finding fish and trying to find them fairly quickly. Hey, hey, I can catch a bass. I can catch a bass and it's a big one. I mean, a big one. Holy smokes. We've been fishing way too deep all day long. I don't know if y'all seen that, but that sure made me excited. We fished all day for that bite. Got a bite on a swim bait. I, I can do that. That's something I can cover. A lot of territory with. Isn't that crazy? You go all day, don't get any bites. There's another one right there. And then you just get something figured out. I'm ready for the tournament to start. I'll go do this the entire day. I've got all the confidence in the world in this right here. 
Practice, it starts two hours before daylight, 100%. You wake up, you're excited, you're rushing. Oh man, we gotta hurry up, we gotta, we gotta launch the boat, we gotta go get gas, we gotta do this. We gotta tight rig all these rods. And by the time it's breaking daylight, you're already exhausted probably. You run all the way to your first spot, and then when you get there, you gotta... You know how hard that is? I mean, it's super hard to do. You try to play these tournaments out for the championship day. Now that's next Sunday, today is Monday. So a lot, this time of year, it, it changes so much. You can find some fish right now, and then, you know, later in the week, they're gone. And you're like, man, what happened? I am not gonna lie to you, that first two hours, I'll take off and run 25, 30 times. I am trying to find a zone, a section of the lake that is a little bit better than the other. You can't go out there and try to win practice. Like, winning practice don't pay nothing. I'm really just trying to find an area. Like, catching one five-pounder in practice is cool and all, but I'm trying to find something to be consistent. Us as fishermen, we, we learn from past experiences, and the best way to get those is to be fishing nonstop. They're ever-changing, and that's what I love about it, and also what I hate about it, because it'd be real nice if we just went and caught them every time. You can't formulate a plan to win these tournaments. It's because when you're on the water, every minute conditions are changing. The guys are the best, they dial that in every hour. Mm -hmm.